Good evening. The game you're about to see is the most stupid, appalling, disgusting and disgraceful exhibition of football possibly in the history of the game. Chile versus Italy. This is the first time the two countries have met. We hope it will be the last. The national motto of Chile reads, by reason or by force. Today, the Chileans were prepared to be reasonable. The Italians only use force. And the result was a disaster for the World Cup. Now, if the World Cup is going to survive in its present form, something's got to be done about teams that play like this. Indeed, after seeing the film tonight, you at home may well think that teams that play in this manner ought to be expelled immediately from the competition. Just see what you think. That night, infamous rant by the BBC's David Coleman would be forever remembered as a damning recollection of the game between Chile and Italy at the 1962 World Cup Finals. The game has gone down in history as the most violent match in World Cup history, given the sheer amount of disorder which took place, including sendings off, punches being thrown, and the intervention of the police on numerous occasions. What led to the tensions between the two nations, and how did a football match on the grandest stage of the sport become an all-out brawl? This is the story of the game now known as the Battle of Santiago. The 1962 FIFA World Cup was selected to be hosted by Chile and ran from the 30th of May to the 17th of June. This would be the third time the sport's most prestigious international competition would be held in South America, with the inaugural 1930 tournament being held in Uruguay and the 1950 edition being hosted by Brazil. After Europe hosted two consecutive World Cups, the American Federation's claim the 1962 edition must be held in South America or they would stage a complete boycott of the tournament, similar to 1938. Both Argentina and Chile put their cases forward, however it would be the Chileans who would see their bid win out by 31 votes to 12. Despite having received a majority vote to host the World Cup from the FIFA Congress, Chile's preparations were severely hampered by the 1960 Valdivia earthquake, the strongest earthquake ever recorded, measuring between 9.4 to 9.6 on the moment magnitude scale, with the resulting landslides destroying the city, as well as the subsequent tsunamis not only affecting Chile, but Hawaii, Japan, the Philippines, Eastern New Zealand, Southeast Australia, and the Aleutian Islands. By the time the tournament itself rolled around, stadia and infrastructure had been rebuilt in record time, overseen by the president of the organisation committee, Carlos Ditborn. The tournament kicked off on the 30th of May as planned, with the opening games taking place at 3pm local time. Going into their game against Italy, Chile were sitting top of their group after a 3-1 victory over Switzerland. In the lead up to the game, already heightened tensions between the two nations were exacerbated by the description of the city of Santiago by two Italian journalists, Antonio Guerelli and Corrado Pizzanelli, describing the city as a backwater dump where the phones don't work, taxis are as rare as faithful husbands, a cable to Europe costs an arm and a leg, and a letter takes five days to turn up, and its population as prone to malnutrition, illiteracy, alcoholism and poverty. Their ire was not contained solely to the city of Santiago, writing, Chile is a small, proud and poor country. It has agreed to organise this World Cup in the same way Mussolini agreed to send our air force to bomb London. The capital city has 700 hotel beds. Entire neighbourhoods are given over to open prostitution. This country and its people are proudly miserable and backwards. Chilean newspapers fired back, describing Italians in general as fascists, mafiosos, oversexed, and because some of Inter Milan's players had recently been involved in a doping scandal, drug addicts. 66,057 filled the Estadio Nacional in Santiago on the 2nd of June to bear witness to what would become one of the most infamous matches in World Cup history. To add to the pre-existing tensions, the Italians were in need of a result having lost their opening game, whilst Chile would qualify for the next phase with a victory. English referee Ken Aston blew his whistle at 3pm local time to begin the game, with the Chileans kicking off the first half. Just 12 seconds into the game, referee Aston would blow his whistle again to signal the first foul of the game. In the 8th minute, Italy were reduced to 10 men as Giorgio Ferrini was dismissed after a foul on Onario Landa, however he refused to leave the pitch 
and had to be removed by police officers present at the game, holding up play for around 10 minutes. A confrontation between Chilean outside left Lionel Sanchez and Italian right back Mario David ended in David receiving a left hook to the face, which went unpunished by referee Aston. Sanchez was involved in another incident later on in the game, again using his left hand to inflict damage on an opposition player, this time breaking the nose of the Italian captain. The game was marred by scuffles and spitting, resulting in the police getting involved a further three times. A football match did break out amongst the chaos, with Chile eventually running out 2-0 winners on the day, eliminating the Italians from the tournament. Despite the reputation that the game between Italy and Chile has gained, on-pitch violence and unsportsmanlike conduct was the theme of the entire 1962 tournament. The eight games played over the first two days of the tournament featured four red cards, three broken legs, a fractured ankle and cracked ribs. The Battle of Santiago proved to be the culmination of the underhanded tactics that had been present throughout the tournament, compounded by the ill feeling between the two nations in the build-up. In the days following the game, the press from both nations defended their country's actions, while condemning those of their opponents. Referee Ken Aston petitioned FIFA President Sir Stanley Rouse to do something about the violence taking place at the tournament. However, he was met with nothing but platitudes, as Rouse failed to deliver on any of the promises made to clean up the competition. Brazil would go on to lift the Jules Rimet trophy after defeating Czechoslovakia 3-1 in the final. The tournament itself would go down in history as a black mark against the beautiful game, with the Battle of Santiago being used as the primary source of evidence to back up those claims. Incidentally, Chile and Italy would clash again four years later in the 1966 edition. The game was a feisty affair, however not to the extent of their previous encounter. Italy would get revenge for their defeat four years previously, coming out 2-0 victors. Violence and incident in the World Cup is still prevalent, with the Zidane headbutt on Marco Materazzi and the Battle of Nuremberg still fresh in the memory. However, thankfully, the days of such scenes that were witnessed throughout the 1962 competition are a thing of the past, which is where they firmly belong.